This episode is brought to you by Squarespace. All right, what's going on, you guys? Welcome back, man, to yet another King James episode. Now, I'm a little bit sick, so this episode might sound a little bit funny on the mic, but today we're gonna be talking about some recent photography pickups for the month of November that I personally have been enjoying. Now, November was kind of a weird transition month for me. I had just moved, but on top of that, during this time of year, I do shoot a lot of family portraits as well as events. And so a lot of the pickups today are going to be inspired based off of these events, with the exception of the two film cameras that we picked up. But for now, let's jump into my November photography pickups. All right, you guys, so the first pickup we're gonna be talking about today is a dual camera harness. Now, going into this season, I, I like I said, I shoot a lot of family portraits as well as events, and so I wanted to get a strap that allowed me to carry two camera bodies. Now, sometimes I am shooting digital plus film, and kind of the issue that I had was I would either have two individual camera straps that were completely different in material and length, and so one would be long and one would be short, or I would just keep one camera in the bag and then only have one out and then kind of switch between the two. Now, obviously that can pose some problems, especially if you want to just get a quick photo with the other camera. And so I went ahead and purchased this dual camera strap from Koiro. Now this is not sponsored whatsoever and I've only used it twice so far, but the first two times using it, it's been extremely, extremely useful. All right, so let's get into the first camera that we picked up in the month of November. Now the camera we have in front of me is one that I didn't even purchase. It's one that was gifted to me from a client that I made photos of. I shot their family portraits and at the very end of the session he said he had a gift for me. And you guys, when he pulled this thing out, I was absolutely amazed because it's a camera I have been looking for for almost two years. That camera, you guys, is the Pentax PC35 AF. Now this one right here, you guys, came with the battery grip, which is like a winder that takes two double A or excuse me, triple A batteries and it makes this camera an auto advanced camera. Now, you can definitely still shoot this without it, and when you take this off, it looks very similar to the Olympus XA. It has kind of like this open clasp design, just like the XA, um, except that you open it here with this red button. It also has a 35 millimeter 2.8 lens, and this is a camera that I've owned in the past, but I've never really gotten to shoot with or make a review on. And so when he gifted this thing to me, I was blown away because it's a camera, like I said, I have been looking for for so long, and I really, really wanna make a video on the channel with it. But you guys, just take a look at how gorgeous this thing is. I'm really, really hoping it performs well and that all of the colors look great. Even though aesthetically it looks like the Olympus XA, I will say this thing definitely feels a lot more bulky and the fact that it has autofocus as well is a game changer so we'll see how this thing performs side by side with the Olympus XA but for now you guys that is the second pickup the Pentax PC 35 AF huge shout out to the family that gifted this to me all right, so before we move into the other cameras and photography gear, I wanna give a huge shout out to our sponsor for this episode, the good folks over at Squarespace. Squarespace is your all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Now, moving over into 2023, one of the best ways to market yourself as a photographer is to have your own dedicated website. Luckily, Squarespace has all the tools you need to get started within minutes with award-winning templates, a portfolio, as well as a space for an e-commerce shop, and a dedicated page for appointment scheduling where your clients can see what times you're available and book you on the spot. So if you guys want to get started with your own personalized website, head over to squarespace.com slash kingjabes and enter promo code kingjabes at checkout and you guys can get 10% off of your first purchase of a domain or a website. Huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this episode. All right, so the next piece of photographic gear is going to be one that I'm using currently and in my opinion, it's absolutely game changing. Okay, so you guys may not know what this thing is right here. It just looks like a black bag, but this is from a company called Godox. And this is essentially just, why did I say it like that, Godox? It's from a company called Godox. And this is essentially just a softbox umbrella, but this is an octagon umbrella that has a closed fixture. So in the past, I was always using something similar to this, which is fine. You know, it's your standard umbrella and it gets the job done. And you know, you kind of open it up like that. It has the Bowen's mount. It'd be great. It was very versatile because you could go to your photo shoot 
knock that thing out and then if it started raining you kind of just turn it up this way and you have an umbrella but it wasn't until i was collaborating with another photographer that i realized that the octagon kind of softbox gave a lot more better diffusion and so i went ahead and ordered one and uh accidentally ordered two now this is great because not only is it really really large but it also feels like it just makes the light a lot softer and it's really cool because you can break it down really easily it comes with a little carrying case and you can pretty much set this up within maybe I'd say 25 30 seconds just to give you guys a better understanding of what we're working with here let me film a little clip video so there is the light box in action and that's you guys I personally would recommend this for any photographer that uses any off-camera flash or even just video content creators that want to get nice diffused light from a soft box and uh, it works great in studio settings in smaller spaces and if you want to kind of elevate your lighting this is definitely a step in the right direction all right you guys and the last photography pickup is a camera we picked up in the last thrifting episode and you guys it's a camera that I haven't owned for over four years but it's one that is near and dear to my heart and that camera you guys is the Pentax Spotmatic SP500. So if you look maybe, I don't know, four or five years ago into some of my early YouTube videos, you'll find that I had maybe three or four of these cameras. Like look for my film camera collection back in 2016 or 2017. The Asahi Pentax Spotmatic was a staple inside of my film camera arsenal and for good reason you know along with the Minolta SRT 101 I think these are some of the most robust feeling 35 millimeter cameras they are completely manual and every single one I found have never had a problem with shutter speeds or curtains or anything of that nature they all are extremely extremely solid with that said you guys we were very lucky to pick this up as a kit with three other lenses and it cost us 50 bucks which is a very very good deal and after picking the camera up i completely forgot just how fun it was to shoot with a fully manual slr i've been so kind of lost with you know the Vortlander bessa the nikon f3 that the pentax spotmatic you know one of my first early cameras ended up being one of the ones that I found to be the most fun to shoot. Now I will say the light meter in here I have not tested just because, I don't know, I just don't feel like putting a battery in it. So I went ahead and adapted up my Kex KM02 light meter that fits perfectly here right on the top. And you know, now I have a functioning camera with a built-in light meter and with any film stock, it's going to give me really great results. Oh yeah, let me show you the other two lenses that I came with. The first one here, oh, maybe I should show you the one that's on the camera. Okay, so there's an ND filter on it. There she is, 55 millimeter F2 lens. So this one along with the 50 millimeter 1.4 lens are probably the better lenses of the Pentax lineup that I've personally tried. It also came with this, I don't know, it seems like a third party lens, but this is made in Korea and this is a 28 millimeter F2 2.8 lens uh, very standard of the time and I think it's gonna be great it's in that m43 screw mount yeah man I mean you're gonna get nice quality results from this lens as well and sort of the last lens that it came with was a telephoto 135 millimeter f 3.5 and just look at that very front element. And I noticed one thing about these Pentax lenses as well is that they are extremely thin. I don't know why, but a lot of the other lenses from Pentax, or excuse me, from other camera brands like Canon or from Minolta, all seem to be extremely bulky. But these Pentax lenses, you know, they, they are extremely thin looking and compact. So that is the last camera and the last pickup from the November photography haul. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys have any questions at all, please leave them in the comment section down below. I am more than happy to answer or just read up on any suggestions that you guys have. Um, comment down below what film cameras or just camera gear you guys have picked up in the last month or two, things that you're enjoying. But that's gonna wrap it up for me. I'll see you guys in the next one, man. As always, Minolta Gang.